Good morning, Natalie. Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Yep. Perfect. Hey, folks. Hey, Tom. Oh, good morning. Hi, Leon. Hey, how are things? Good. All right, I think people have kind of settled in and as people join, I'll, I'll just get started. Um, so good morning or good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be. Um, it's been a while since we've met. Um, I think our last meeting was actually in June. So I hope everyone had a great summer and a great start to the semester. Um, if so, in the chat box, I actually just linked our Google Docs where we kind of take our attendance every single time. So if you could um, under the attendees for today's meeting, put your name and affiliation. That would be that would be amazing. Thank you. And as you guys do that, um, I'll give it a few minutes. All right, so as people are just finishing up adding their names into the attendance list, um, I had a couple announcements that I want to start with. So first, our meeting from June that was recorded um, has been uploaded onto our expansion microscopy user group YouTube channel. So if you want to you know, watch that one, feel free to, to go there and do that. And we also have a new form um, to update our user group details just so we get some more demographics about where people are and how we can better connect um, people from you know, proximities to their communities and other people who um, might want to collaborate on different projects. So please go fill that out. I can put the link in the chat as well. So. So that RMS link is to the new form. Um, feel free to fill it out at the end of today's meeting or um, when you have the time. And then uh, Brenda also, so one of our, our users, she's not here today, but she provided us with a Google Doc of the dyes that she uses and she's tested for expansion microscopy. Um, if you know, you're all doing expansion, it would be great if you have any dyes that are not on that Google Doc yet to update it and let everybody know um, what has worked or hasn't worked for you. Um, the link to that is also in our Google Doc, you, uh, in our main Google Doc, um, but I can also put that. 
uh, link in the chat. So this will be the new one. And yeah, so if you could just add your comment or any dyes and reagents that you, you've used, that'd be great. And for today's meeting, um, we were supposed to have two um, speakers, but one of us cannot join us. So we might um, have to cut it short a little bit, but we have Tom Skillman from Immersive Science LLC. Um, thank you, Tom, for being here today and for preparing a, a presentation. Um, yeah. Uh, so your company, I guess just a quick blurb, develops uh, visualization and analysis tools, and you specifically have a software for expansion, correct? Correct. All right. Amazing. I'll let you um, tell us all about it. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, great. Um, can you um, remind me how to uh, do the screen share? Can I do it from my side, or do you have to give me permission? or? Yep, so I think um, you should have permission uh, from at the bottom of your screen. Do you see a green button that says share screen? Yeah, so if that as long as I have the power to do it, that's great. We should be good. So uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me just get into this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thanks for the invite to be here today. Can, can everyone see my screen? Great. Yes. Uh, uh, Natalie, thanks for the invite. Um, and um, and I just will also want to acknowledge that um, the primary uh, sort of uh, uh, microscopist on this uh, that worked in this collaboration uh, that I'm going to discuss today was uh, uh, Leon Zhao, who's also on the call today. So I just want to acknowledge Leon as uh, a key. Uh, player in the uh, and all the details related to expansion microscopy biology part. Uh, Leon's the guy. So if we get into questions, I'm going to defer to him for answers. But I'm more going to focus on the software and uh, walk you through that. So quickly, my background um, is uh, my education is in physics, computer science, and uh, business. I've been doing sort of information technology stuff in the scientific domain for over 30 years. I was at the University of Maryland, then went to NASA, Boeing, Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, uh, epigenomics, uh, uh, a uh, epigenetics startup, and uh, uh, Ben Arroyo Research Institute doing immune research. So I've always been responsible for sort of the information management and display. Um, in 2018, I founded uh, information science with the goal of really trying to understand if uh, virtual reality brought value to the research scientists that uh, actually allow us to look at and see and interact with our data in a new way. And it's gone very well. It's, it's quite interesting what's possible. I've uh, The company has developed three applications targeted at biologists and three at astronomy, actually, looking at uh, star data. You can go to uh, imsci.com for more details. Um, and all these apps are, you know, information about them is available there. So for uh, today, we're going to talk about one product called Expansion or EX Micro VR. Um, and it's, uh, again, I uh, it's a collaboration that was funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation between uh, my company, Ben Arroyo Research Institute, and Carnegie Mellon, where Leon is. Um, it was really focused on um, a, a, a subdomain of expansion microscopy, looking at host pathogen interaction and the details of how do you stain and expand more complex biological samples. Is that close enough, Leon? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and the real um, interesting capability with uh, the expansion was to, the idea of being able to really generate many channels of information around the same biological sample. Uh, but that was generating so much visual information that the ability to look at it and analyze and understand it was, was a problem. So we looked at how to bring that that you know, what's naturally a three-dimensional image from the confocal microscopy into VR 
and to allow you to support the multiple channels and to work with the multiple channels in 3D. And being able to um, also collaborate in VR space so multiple people can run the software on their local machines, but connect over the internet. And you can see each other uh, icon or uh, avatars of each other's, but you can talk, manipulate, point, uh, grab and manipulate the image and everyone sees the same thing. So it creates a virtual shared space where you can sort of uh, really analyze and think about uh, what's going on in the biology. If you go to the website, you'll see the page on the left. This is the X micro download page and it's not shown here, but a little lower on the page are the links to click to download. Uh, it's free to um, nonprofit, like all, all the universities here are uh, can download it for free. Um, and uh, and I'm always available to help people get set up and to do the initial uh, image conversions to go from your particular microscope to a data set format that uh, X micro can can uh, display. I wanted to jump sideways a little bit and just talk about the the th it's not just virtual reality that's you know even apple now has started talking about the immersive experience as opposed to vr because the emphasis is really on sort of being immersed in your data and if i can try to do it it's very difficult to show vr over zoom or any other 2d display even a 2d video because you never get the full effect of seeing uh, the 3d world and if I can try to just get you to do a simple thing, if you if you look in your room right now in some direction where you can see things both close to you and far away and close one eye and just sort of look at the room and think about what you see and think about what's closer and farther away. And it's, it's basically a very flat image because there's no depth information from one eye. And if you move your, your head left and right while you're looking with one eye, you'll begin to get a little sense of depth because things closer to you move differently than things farther away. But it's if, as soon as you stop moving, it goes flat again. And then if you open both eyes, now suddenly you see the full 3D view all at once and your mind just instantly can understand where everything is and how they're distributed. And that's the same experience you have in VR. Um, when, when you're used to looking at your images, your 3D, your <laughs> your your confocal images that are 3D on a 2D screen, you've really been looking at them with one eye. And when you go into VR, you're looking at it with two eyes and it just sort of pops into this full three-dimensional world that your brain instantly understands and can process. So that coupled with sound and motion and the linking across cop, uh, collaborators, that's what creates the total immersive experience. And that's what's unique. And it's what it doesn't matter how much I say about it until you put the headset on and see it. Uh, it's just um, it's just talk until you see it yourself. So that's that's a challenge uh, for me as a uh, as an evangelist for this technology. Um, it's been used by uh, researchers all over the world. Um, here's just some little video clips of different kinds of uh, samples that have been looked at by different people. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, going the wrong way. Um, and so uh, this just to give you a sense that this isn't just targeted at a particular biological sample that we used in our research, but uh, many people are using it in many ways. So an overview of the of the tool. Um, it's compatible with most VR software, uh, VR systems like the Quest, Rift, Vive, Odyssey. Um, can I, let me just pause for a second. Do of the people on the call today um, have many of you used VR? Have, have many of you had the VR goggles on before? I don't know if I let's see. Can I see everyone? Okay, I see Natalie. Looks like uh, I see anyone else, but up oh, Stefan looks like maybe. Um, so, yeah, so it's a new thing for all of you, for, for most of you. Um, so there's many different uh, VR software manufacturers. Uh, Quest is probably the most popular right now because it's sort of the best system at the lowest cost. Uh, you do need a compatible uh, workstation. It, it only works on PC. It doesn't work on Mac. This is to do with the background of, uh, of, of just how VR was developed and somehow they decided to go on a Windows platform and uh, 
So you need access to Windows Workstation and a GPU accelerator. So one of these NVIDIA GPU cards on it. You use the open source ImageJ software to do the uh, image preparation. It's, it's a, you can put it in a macro and in just a couple of minutes, you can go from your raw image files, usually TIFF files, TIFF stack uh, into uh, a nifty file format, which is then used in, in, in uh, XMicro. You can load up to 30 channels of uh, 3D stacks. So that's 30 3D stacks, 30 different um, uh, markers. Once you're in the space, you can grab the image and manipulate it. Uh, you can turn it, look at it. I'll be showing this. Um, you can adjust each channel separately uh, and it helps you quickly identify regions of interest. It's not designed as an analytic tool. Uh, so if you want to do detailed measurements, you would typically fall back to an image J or something like that. But the thing this really excels at is getting the overview of your image, uh, identification of uh, regions of interest and the ability to focus in on those. Uh, as I said, you can adjust channels individually. And then uh, with just a couple of clicks, you can connect with other researchers uh, and be in a, a shared space sharing the, the uh, data from the image. The, this work was re recently written up and published in Advanced Science Research uh, under a paper uh, titled uh, Mic Micromagnify, a Multiplexed Expansion Microscopy Method for Pathogen Infectious Tissues. The link's here. Um, and in that, there's also a, um, a, a high-res demo, that we, you, a video that you can run through. I'm a little worried that when I display VR today, uh, Zoom won't keep up and it'll be choppy, uh, but the video shows it actually runs very smoothly and it's very interactive. There's no hesitation or pauses, but we'll see how it goes uh, today. And if it's choppy, please, uh, I'll try to move slowly, but hopefully uh, you'll get a sense of, of what it's all about. So we're gonna jump over, um, uh, sorry, uh, on the right-hand side of this page, you see a, a diagram there. This is image uh, figure six from that paper. Uh, and you can go to the paper to see details about what the sample is. Um, and you can see all the channels that are represented here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but uh, on the right bottom of that image, it's got the list of channels. And now with a little luck, I'm gonna switch over and share the VR screen and uh, show you a few things from that. Um, I, Natalie, can you stay online uh, audio? Because when I put this on, I just realized it may try to switch to the headphone audio. And you, if you, if you can't hear me anymore, uh, tell me and I will readjust the audio. Okay, sure. I'll let you know. Let's see. Uh, I want to share my whole screen. Uh, Okay. Are you starting to see some stuff? Yep, we can see it. Okay. And I haven't put the headset on now, but can you still hear me okay? Yep, I can hear. Okay, so um, I've got the, the headset on and I'm holding these two controllers in my hands. And just a quick check, maybe with you, Natalie, is how is the image up? dating fast or is it kind of slow and choppy if I do this? It's it's fast. It's pretty fast. Okay, great, great. So uh, this is the overall environment that we're in, in this virtual environment. There's a, a chat panel, panel over here for loading uh, data sets. Um, this displays the channels that are loaded and you can select which channel to turn off or on. Right now they're, they're all on. We can turn them off and turn them on one by one. So just turn them all on for a second. Um, you can save and load the settings. And then here's the image. And again, it's it's hard over 2D, but hopefully you'll get a bit of a sense that it's a, it's a 3D object that I can look at and manipulate. And then on this side, we have the various settings that we can do brightness, contrast, opacity. We can do thresholding, 
We can rescale uh, the intensity. We can do a pseudo uh, surface thresholding, adjust the color. So for instance, if we just uh, turn on the green channel here, you can come over and turn the green to, you know, uh, you know, to red. Uh, so that's all adjustable just with pointing and sliding. Again, is this coming across okay over the over Zoom? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. Um, you can adjust the, the scale of the image. Let's jump there a little bit. And you can also adjust the depth Zoom. So sometimes you want to uh, enhance the depth of the image. And again, if we um, make this a little smaller, if we turn all the channels back on one by one here, you'll just get a sense of, again, uh, it's Leon's work and his grad student, uh, Sherry. Leon, I, I sorry, I don't remember her full name. Do you want to just give her a, a nod? Uh, yeah, Sherry Chen. Okay. So you want to say a bit about her? Because this is a lot of her work with doing the doing the. Oh yeah, yeah. She's she's uh, mainly focused on um, uh, microbial cell uh, optimized um, next gen expansion microscopy. So we call this uh, micro magnify, and uh, she discovered a way to uh, perform expansion microscopy on almost a broad spectrum of um, pathogen containing specimen, not just pathogen alone, but but also um, infected tissues, you know, including the uh, clinical format, uh, for example, like FFPE or H and E uh, slice. So it's, it has really, really like probably the most um, versatile version uh, of expansion of microscopy. And uh, yeah, because you can literally like expand any kinds of samples that you want. Okay, and also, great. like we can do multiplexing too. So in this case, you you have ten colors, so you can actually image ten different markers. Um, the little pathogen is the little red balls, you know, sitting somewhere. Yeah, and those are the okay. Staphylococcus aureus. Yeah, this like little guys. You know, with a very thick cell wall, but uh, micro magnify can expand them, and uh, you know, you can actually image. So this is actually the uh, Staphylococcus aureus infected um, cells. So you can actually see how they interact with uh, different markers inside the cell using this VR. And of course, you can do that in a collaborative mode, right? So it's very impressive, actually. Like I, I we, we actually have our own uh, VR station here using this software, uh, quite routinely, uh, because it really gives you a very different feel uh, compared to like the um, other 3D display software. Right, thank you, Leon, that's really helpful. And uh, again, uh, nice work, Sherry, uh, for her contribution here. Um, again, you know, I'm seeing this in full 3D. I can reach out and I can see exact dimensions. I can see how how this, uh, how the cell is distributed and how these pathogens are distributed in full 3D. If, what you'll notice, if I stop moving, um, the thing's very flat. If I move back and forth a bit, you get a bit of a sense of the depth. If I grab it and rotate it, which is like if you're used to image J, image J has a 3D visualization, which is fine as long as you're moving the image. But as soon as you stop moving the image, it goes flat. Um, here, you can just have it stationary and you can sit and look at it and really think about what's going on without having any motion involved to, to distract you. So um, that's kind of the, the key idea. Um, uh, again, sometimes you have a very uh, complicated uh, deep image, and what we found was the need for the ability to come in and focus uh, on the internal of an image. So we have this thing called an excluder that lets you sort of knock away things that are close up and let you look down into the image. And you can also find a region of interest and flip this, uh, invert it. And now you're only looking at the area that you care about. And you can then you know, work on and manipulate this, uh, identify it. Um, 
I think that's the, hopefully that just gives you a general sense of the environment and um, let's see, I'm gonna drop back out of VR now, unless anyone, does anyone wanna see anything in particular uh, about the VR space? Okay, I'll do, kick it off here. And let me try to If I stop share, okay. <laughs> so I think, um, Natalie, that's uh, the main message I wanted to get across. Oh, maybe, uh, I think I had maybe one more slide. Um, let me try. Um, where's the slides? Um, ah, no, just, uh, sorry, I thought I had one other, but, but so thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for letting me tell you a little bit about this and Leon, thanks for your extra info and I'm um, open to any questions. Thanks Tom for that. You know, that was very, very interesting. I really liked the, the, actual live demo that you gave. I think that really gave us a better feel rather than, you know, just the the videos that you were showing. Okay, um, good. Yeah, that, that was really great. So I guess we'll take any questions um, from our audience first. And feel free to type it in the chat. I can, I can um, verbalize that if you have any questions. Yeah, I would just say if, uh, if anyone is, um... You know, I'm happy to help people get set up. The cost is pretty low now with the software being free. Uh, you basically just need a Quest 2 headset, which is about, they just lowered the price. It's around, I think, under $300 now. So, you know, in terms of supplementing uh, your, you know, half million dollar confocal microscope and, uh, um, you know, all your hard work to generate these, your 3D images uh, to actually see them, uh, in 3D, it's it's pretty pretty nice, and I'm happy to help people get set up to do that. So, please just reach out to me. So we have a question in the chat box from Nikki Paul from Glasgow, and they're asking, "Is your software compatible with any VR hardware?" Many thanks. Um, I think, as I um, said at the beginning, it's all all the most popular ones that I know of. So it's compatible with Vive, Quest, um, um, let's see, uh, Microsoft has a version. I don't know if I can uh, quickly get back to, I had a slide where I listed, um, yeah, it's the Quest, the Rift, Vive, Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey is the related to the Windows mixed reality. So uh, it works there as well. I guess I have a question from your personal experiences using this. Um, I've heard a lot of people have, um, I guess, this kind of disconnect between VR and, you know, real life when they're immersed in it for so long. So, you know, some people are conducting um, image analysis for, for hours and hours. Have you ever found that to be, um, you know, is it is it kind of hard to dissociate from that afterwards? Or do you find it difficult to go back to looking at, you know, images in image J after you had that um, VR experience? Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I don't have any, I've never experienced any negative effects, no disorientation. Um, in the early days of VR, the systems didn't update fast enough visually and it caused nausea. So people ha uh, had nauseous experience, um, but I, that was the very early days, and now it really doesn't seem to be a problem for most people. Um, the, the, I was kind of chuckling to myself because I actually have the other experiences that when you take the VR headset off after you've had it on, it's kind of disoriented to be to be suddenly confronted with all the clutter that exists in our normal environment. So you take off the headset where you've had this sort of this black flat background and just your your data to look at. And then suddenly, you know, you've got books and shelves and papers and printers and computers, and it's it's actually kind of disorienting that way. Um, and um, 
yeah, it's um, it's fascinating to collaborate in VR because you're you know I'm not. I'm not interested in anything that Facebook is doing with trying to make people look realistic and trying to, you know, have it be a social media. This is just the idea that sometimes scientists like to look at the same image and point and talk about what's this, what's going on here, what's that. And to be able to do that in VR and have the instantaneous communication, um, you know, while everyone's looking at the same image and adjusting it and everyone sees each other's adjustments um, is really this immersive experience that is really uh, fun and unique. What kind of bandwidth is needed for VR collaborations? Um, it's it's pretty low actually because um, every system has their own VR headset and their own local GPU. So all the heavy lifting is done on your local computer, and all that's being shared across the network is information about everyone's everyone's headset location on their local machine, and that so that's shared. And if you adjust any of the sliders and things, that gets shared. So it's really uh, no particularly hard demands. And can I ask you, since you're online, did was the video quality okay when I was uh, through Zoom? Was it choppy or okay? It's it's hard to know without a reference point of what it looks like live. Well, if it if it if it was choppy and annoyingly so, then that that was Zoom. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I like I said I can't tell. Okay. Did you have any other questions about the bandwidth? The um, nope. most most modern computers now, if you bought a computer within the last two or three years, they pretty much all come with GPUs in them now. And um, so uh, you really pretty much everyone can run. Uh, so it's really the cost of a Quest 2 to, to get into this game. So a technical question on the expansion, was the multiplexing done with DNA Paint? Not really. Um, so this is just done by the serial uh, immunofluorescent imaging. So basically, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't have the chance uh, to introduce my magnify. It, it's recently uh, appeared in um, a Nature Biotechnology, and the micro magnify is the follow up papers on it. But basically, magnify is uh, a type of expansion microscopy uh, preserve uh, epitopes and biomolecules, all kinds, in the yep. gel. So basically, you actually can perform immunofluorescent post expansion. Therefore, yep. we here use the po uh, serial uh, imaging trick. So you you do the cyclic immunofluorescent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So and that was imaged with the W one um, spinning disc. Uh, yes, in our case, yes. But you can literally use any other confocals. Yeah. Yeah, we've been finding that's a good setup for it. Uh, we've got a Sora, so we'll use the 20x uh, long working distance water with the 4x magnifier, and that actually yields some really nice data. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, if you if you can uh, even buy this 40x, or actually 60x will be a uh, 60x water. Uh, the, the 40 has a longer working distance. I've, yeah, yes, I've got right. that too. It's um, the have you tried that on a um, light sheet system yet? We actually tried it on all kinds. <laughs> so <laughs> I, bring, I bring the samples uh, to um, a light sheet conference, almost yeah. try every, every um, light sheet microscope. Yeah, it works great. The reason is, you know, you stink afterward. You stink post expansion. Yep. So yep. the limitation of the fluorescent are way less. I mean, uh, four or four, you know, like there's a way less uh, limitation. Yeah. So yeah, it's also much brighter too because yeah, you're not yeah, actually... you're not exactly. Fantastic. You said there's a follow-up paper to the original magnify. So, yeah, magnify is a nature biotech paper. Michael yeah. magnify is a advanced science paper. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know if people get a copy of the slide presentation, but the, there's links to the papers and videos and stuff in it. <clears throat> Yep, we can definitely um, share the slides with, with yeah. everyone here. That'd be great. Yep. The um, RMS will also post the video of the session on their YouTube channel. Oh, thanks, Claire. Hi, by the way. All right, so I think um, that is all the questions we have today. Um, unless anybody wants to put a quick 
question in the chat. Um, otherwise, thank you so much, Tom and, and Leon for your time and for, for your work. Um, hopefully, Tom, would you mind if I share your, your details with everyone in the group in case um, they want to contact you for, for future collaborations or anything like that? Yeah, that's absolutely. And it's also Perfect. in the PowerPoint slides. If people uh, get that, they can also track me down. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I guess, yeah, so we have a bit of, yeah, sorry, you had a question? No, I just said thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I guess we have a bit of time. So, um, oh, Claire, did you want to say something? I was just going to mention that Natalie worked really hard to line up another company and and things kind of fell through at the last minute. So uh, so maybe we'll be able to get them, them to come on in the future. But uh, thanks for your work on that, Natalie. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I guess on that note, before um, I can confirm with, with our other original guest speaker, um, I was just wondering if anybody has any suggestions or ideas for what they would like to hear in our future meetings so I could start lining those up. And um, yeah, so feel free to, to give your opinion. I'm happy to, to put in the work to bring in whoever um, you guys would like to hear from or whatever topics that um, you would like to hear more about. I just want to say that I'm. Uh, if you folks are curious about uh, Manify, I'm happy to, uh, you know, introduce that in uh, in the future section if you if you like. Yeah, I would love to hear a talk on that, especially with the troubleshooting and you know how to overcome some of you know. There's always issues with a prep um, when people try it for the first time in their hands. Things will come up. You know, to understand what failed and how you got around the difficulties would be really helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, we do have um, upcoming uh, JOBE papers uh, yep. with uh, videos, and uh, we also have a website. Uh, we also actually recently uh, found a startup try to distribute kits as well as uh, some other new toys that hopefully can help you folks. That's great. Thank you, Leon. So I guess I'll be in touch with you about um, setting up our next meeting for that. Great. I just put a note in the chat. There was a, a paper that just came out in Nature Methods on this gel map of uh, using um, lasers to write a pattern on the sample before expansion and using that as a reference for correction. So that could be another possibility if one of the authors wanted to come and speak. Yeah, for sure. That sounds really interesting. Um, so if um, anybody ever has any idea um, or, you know, you come across anybody that you would like to come speak to our at, at one of our meetings, like feel free to send me an email and I'll try to set that up. Um, there's no need to, to give me any names right now. Um, but yeah, feel free to just reach out whenever whenever the time comes. So we are a bit early. Um, if anybody has any more questions, feel free to, to speak up or type it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm sure we're all happy to to end meetings early and have a couple minutes to to break. Just want to say thank you for all the work you're doing organizing this. It's extremely useful. Thank you for coming. I, I'm glad that um, it, it's helping some people and myself, obviously. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks thank again. you. Have a good morning or afternoon. Yeah, it's way morning here in Seattle. Oh, no. Thank you so Thanks much for joining us so early. <laughs> Back to bed, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> See you. Thanks, everyone. See you all. Nice. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Leon.